Blood Concepts and Solutions. Solutions that meet the moment. One thing about inner city life, it's fast life. You know, everything's going on. I mean, you, you hear gunshots, you see police harassing people. You see a lot of things and it just becomes normalized in the community. I feel confident as a young man, you know, due to the fact that I didn't have a mom to, you know, uh, give me that nurturing feeling. I had a dad that was in the military who was strong and, you know, taught me about being strong. And so I never had um, the nurturing aspect of it like um, most kids that are in intact families. I got my nurturing from other uh, male influences, i.e. coaches. Coaches who would praise me for how well I played basketball. Not only did the coaches praise me, but my teammates, you know, um, students at the high school. I was receiving praise um, from the media, the local media, to where I was one of the top players in Southern California going into my senior year. As an adult, I was able to coach um, at the varsity level and I was a head coach. And so I had three good years of uh, trying to groom young men into men. So without verbal praise, I don't think I would have uh, went that far. Taking a leap of faith and believing in something and standing on what you believe. And that was the basic principles of my basketball program. And through that, you know, we um, were able to accomplish a league championship and I was able to accomplish coach of the year. Now, these things don't happen without each other. I wouldn't have been coach of the year if I didn't have a team that won league. And in order for them to win league, I have to criticize and, and correct their weaknesses and make them their strengths. Now, it's not like once they reach the level that I wanted them to play, I began to have verbal praise. That's not what I'm saying. But when they started to shift their minds from thinking that they couldn't do it to they can do it, little increments, I gave them praise along the way all the way up until we got to the championship game of our league and we won league. Verbal praise works. You have to look them in the eye and tell them that you believe in them because ultimately you do. Because if you didn't believe in your team, why are you there? Why are you messing with them? Verbal praise goes a long way. I'm not saying give somebody verbal praise if they're doing negative things because that does not deserve verbal praise. But if you have somebody that is trying their hardest, whether it be in the sports realm or whether it be in education, um, whether they're trying to get to trying to uh, pass a test, fill out an application, these type of things, um, you need to give praise. You know, and again, I'm not talking about church praise. I'm talking about verbal praise, like saying, hey, man, I see what you're doing. I see you stepping out of your, your comfort zone and you're getting it in. That is verbal praise. I'm not talking about you just going and giving that fake ass love and that fake ass hugs and, and fake like, you know, you, you're happy for him. It has to be genuine. And if it's not genuine, then don't do it. Even though my son did not play to his ability, because, again, I am his parent along with my wife and we know what he's capable of doing. And he did not play that way. And yet we still gave him verbal praise and said, good job for going out there and, and playing. However, you didn't play hard as you could to your ability. You kept your team involved. You know, you were really positive. You scored when you needed to score. It's not about the wins or losses. It's about you playing hard as you can and doing what you can, when you can in the game. And going, you know, try to do go as hard as you can. And I always tell them, you know, when you go beast mode, that's like 90 to 100 percent. But we did give them praise for just going out there and, and, and at least trying. And, and we understood and validated the fact that it was his first game out of uh, quarantine. Um, he only had one practice with this team. And again, you're running up and down a soccer field. So they, these are the, these are the factors that, um, you know, we understood and we, we, we validated that. Verbal praise works. The second game, he went out there and took what we said and he did it. And as a reward, after the game, we gave him you know, a lot of verbal praise, you know, telling him good job. You know, the game was close and the look on his face said it all that he did what he was supposed to do and he tried. And the praise that we gave him as his parents and his teammates and his coach and the parents of the t of both teams said he yeah, did a really good job. And once he felt that and saw that, it was uh, it, it, it put something into him because this morning he woke up and he was out there um, working on his game again. That's three examples of why verbal praise is so important. Now, again, when we talk about verbal praise, we're not talking about, you know, going to church and praising the Lord and stuff like that, which you can do. I'm not saying you can't, but this verbal praise is a little different. This verbal praise is actually praising someone for what they're doing. That's positive, whether it be they're sitting in a, in a study hall 
Then you go up to him and say, hey, man, I see what you're doing. You know, not a lot of people are out here, you know, on a Saturday night putting in that time and studying. Like, this good job, man. Keep working and honing in on your craft. It's going to pay off. That right there goes a long way for somebody who's out there, you know, studying because it validates why they're doing what they're doing and they're putting in the time and doing the work. So please, verbal praise, get that in your vocabulary, start using it, start telling everybody else about it because kids need to know it, parents need to know it. What do you guys think? Let me know. Subscribe, comment below, and share this. Please share it. This is Mr. BCS, and I'm out.